Pepsi. A dil mange more Pepsi. Like that, how much more you want to read. When you feel like that, that's your natural ability. That you like to do and love to do, indulge in it more. There are some subjects when you take up and you read one page and you look at the clock. Huh? Only two minutes gone. Huh? It looks like one hour I'm reading it. Who wrote this textbook here? Oh, my head is reeling. Oh, the devil is coming in. Where is that guy? Devil is gone, huh? Where? Huh? Oh, he's, he's gone out. He's got a call. Okay. So, the devil is going in into my head. I don't want to read it. Even if I read for 10 minutes, it looks like I was reading for one hour, two hours. Oh, my God. How many of you had that feeling? You know which subject when you read, you have that feeling. Then, these are the indicators of what you like to do naturally and what you don't like to do naturally. If you are able to find out, observe that within yourself, you know what your strengths are and what your weaknesses are. If you know your strengths, work on your strengths, you will be excellent. If you know your weakness, avoid that area. Because whatever you try, you will not be able to do well in that. So what is occupations? From morning to evening, you're doing something. In holidays, what do you do? When you get holidays, you don't have to read books, you don't need to do homework. What do you do in your holidays? Do you have summer holidays? What do you do in summer holidays? Or any time you have one month, two months holidays, you have long period? No? You have school 365 days a year? Yeah. Huh, then? Vacation time. Vacation time. Ah, you'll go for vacation. Very good. When do you go for vacation? Long break, how many days? Uh, 30, days. 30 days, that's what I was asking you. What do you do during that time? How do you enjoy yourself? From morning to evening, somebody will be playing something, somebody will be painting, somebody will be singing, somebody will be dancing. Huh? Right or wrong? Do you need a cup of tea or coffee? Right, right. Where is my energy in blue shirt at the end of the hall? Energy! Give them energy! <laughs> no? What's the answer? What do you do? If you're occupied from morning to evening doing a particular activity, it's called an occupation. The same thing if you do better and it gets you money, it's called vocation. You become perfect in that, you are called a professional. Occupation becomes a vocation and a vocation becomes a profession. Now let us ask, how did the passionate person take up to teaching? From which age he wanted to teach and now also he is enjoying teaching. How did you come to teaching? Let me ask him. Here is a live example. We did not look for examples outside the world. In the hall itself we have a hero. Yeah, I have been teaching for... 28 years. Wonderful, 28 <laughs> years. But what brought you to teaching? English subject. Okay. English, and, yeah. uh, English subject. Yes. But then, what was that urge in you which said, I want to become a teacher? Sorry? There was some urge or natural calling, inner voice, I want to become a teacher. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I want to be a teacher. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I, I, I was thinking when I was a student in a, at my school. Yes. Um, in the beginning, uh, I was impre uh, fully impressed by my teacher. Wonderful. And then I make, I made a plan yes. to be a teacher. Wonderful. So I started I, teaching. You, is that teacher of yours alive today? Is yeah, he yeah. around? Yeah. From my side, go give your teacher a hug and <laughs> say, this person said, give a hug and appreciate him because your teacher inspired and motivated you to become a teacher. Today, the biggest problem is many people don't ask others to become teachers. Doctor Banjao, engineer Banjao. We have less of teachers. We need good teachers in this world. Yeah. Give a big hand to him. Uh, What's your name? Uh, but I don't know. My, uh, now, my students are influenced by me or not? My profession. Yes. Uh, do they like or not my profession or teaching? Or, uh, but by nature, yeah. when it comes, they will become a teacher. <laughs> it, it comes from within. Uh, I like teaching. I want to teach. And that's how we pick up. That's yeah. my nature. I yeah. started teaching when I was six years old. Yeah. Let all the fellows sit down there, hey, I am the teacher, your student, come on, tell this, I used to start. That's how I became a teacher. In college, we never had professors. 
we were in, uh, in the first batch of something. Professors were not coming, so when I went to second year, I started teaching the first year. <laughs> so that's how my teaching career was launched, because I love to do that. <laughs> and by now you will all know, you give me a classroom at 9 o'clock in the morning, I can go on till 9 o'clock in the night. Non-stop. Can talk. I love it. So best profession is teaching, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, of course. So that passion drives yeah, me yeah, to yeah, teach. Yeah, yeah. I, I That's it. Passion. That's what I'm just giving you an example. Find out. You may like to do something. He likes to play football 24 hours. <laughs> he likes to play volleyball, right? Yeah. Very good. Excellent. So you choose what you want to do in your life based on what you like to do, what you love to do. So your strengths, you will start finding out. You'll go home and write down what I like to do, what I don't like to do. You'll make a list. You'll do that, no? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Three bags full, sir. One for my master, one for my... Huh? You haven't read? Baba, black sheep, have you any wool? No, yes, sir. What should you say? Yes, Jay. Good. Some of you still remember. Okay. So let's go beyond this. Make a list. What you're good at, what you're not good at. And as you go higher up in your school, college, you will choose to study what you like and love. You will not choose because somebody else said this is good for you. You all go to hotels, right? And have something to eat, ice cream, this, that you love, isn't it? Now, what ice cream do you like? Vanilla. Now, if I give you a raspberry, you don't like it. So, he likes vanilla. I like raspberry. He says, eat this. Vanilla is good taste. Eh, not as good as raspberry, man. So, what one likes, the other may not like. Hmm? Isn't it? So, you decide what you like to do. Okay? And you choose. You, only you can choose. I can't choose for you. Is it making sense to you? Ah, somebody wrote this. This is for all the people who work in my country and city elsewhere. Friday night is my delight because Saturday and Sunday is holiday. You have Saturday and Sunday holiday for school? No? Only Saturday. So they used to say Saturday, Sunday, Friday is my delight, Saturday, Sunday holiday, I'll enjoy my Sunday and Monday morning blues. I don't like to go to work here. I don't want to go to school Monday morning. Some people have that syndrome, no? After a holiday, going to school, after 30 days, somebody said, no? 30 days vacation, after you come back, how does it feel to go to school? <laughs> One more day holiday. <laughs> One more day. How many of you feel like that? Be, please be very frank. After a vacation, how many have got starting trouble? I want to go to school, but I don't want to go to school. Confusion, isn't it? Yes, good. I like that. You be frank. Because after you grow up, it's your life. You're going to handle your life, isn't it? We won't be around. Okay, this is, we'll skip this. We are going to go into different composition of body. We are made of nature and all that. That's for older people. Just to say that we are all products of nature. So, natural ability is important. What did Cicero say? Cicero, the Greek philosopher said, natural ability without education has risen a man to glory and virtue than education without natural ability. So, you must focus on your natural abilities, your inborn strengths. To do that, I'm going to give you a Simple example which is understood by most people in agrarian countries. You have a lot of agriculture, isn't it? In Nepal? Agriculture? Now you will understand this very easily. How does a farmer select his crop? According to the soil. First of all, if you have a land, a piece of land, what soil is it? Clay soil? Red soil? Loamy soil? According to the soil only you will choose the crop. You will sow the seed according to the soil. What kind of soil do you have in Nepal? What's the kind of soil? Is it red? Is it loamy? Is it clay? 
What soil is it? Somebody can help me. You have all kinds of soil here? Then if you are a farmer, you own a piece of land, you should know which kind of soil you have. Right? If you don't know which kind of soil you have, you will not know which kind of seeds to sow. And it may not grow if you don't know your soil. For example, if one tries to grow tulips of Holland and black soil, I said in India, but then here, if somebody has black soil, and if you want to grow tulips, those beautiful flowers, it will neither go, or it will be a stunted growth. Similarly, if you try to grow a particular kind of a crop in a soil which is not conducive, it will not grow. So, we are coming to a point here. If you grow cotton in black soil, it will be in full bloom. So, understanding the environment and understanding yourself, then you will do a self-analysis and you will... Older people, I'm telling you, the methods and findings they will tell us, but then you will know what you're made up of. We are all human beings like soil. You should know what seeds to be sown inside so that you will have the best growth, best yield. How many of you like public speaking? How many of you have fear to come stand there and talk? How many of you have got fear to come stand there and talk? Good. Because by nature, some people are not made to speak in public. Friend to friend, I will speak, but not there. If I ask you to come there, what happens? <laughs> my legs are feeling weak. Hot air is going out of my ear. <laughs> the butterfly is churning in my stomach. <laughs> and then, oh, oh, how many people looking at me? They're scared because by nature. Right? That's what happens, isn't it? Oh, gone case here today. Are 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 aaj. Isn't it? But there are some people who like to do it. If you call them, they'll be waiting. Get up and run. Yes, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. And they'll start speaking. So, abilities vary from person to person. You will like and love what you love to do. Again, I'm driving this point. Please follow that carefully. I'm going to skip these things and get on to one important important thing as your student. Most of us don't fail to plan, but we just fail the plan. We make plans. I want to do this, I want to do that. Then finally what happens? No, yeah, that was not possible. Many of us do make a lot of plans. Now on timetable, I have to study every day, this subject, this time. And for exams, I have to study. Then what happens? Something happens and the plan fails. What happened? Why you didn't study? Something happened, I didn't study. Tomorrow we'll study. So always remember, you don't fail to plan, but we are failing the plan. Don't fail the plan. Just follow the plan properly. Then have plan A, plan B, plan C. When plan A fails, try plan B and plan C. Okay, we are running short of time. It's almost three something, so I'm going to skip a few slides. What is the mantra for failure? Laziness. Who said that? Very good, you'll get a chocolate. One of the causes, laziness. Okay, anybody else? What is the mantra for failure? And excuses, okay. Excuses come because of laziness. Because you couldn't do something, you'll say, hey, sorry, I didn't do that. There's something more deeper, self-doubt. Can I do it? think I can do it. Somebody said do it. Sometimes when you're walking on the road, there's a ditch. Somebody has dug the road. Then you know there are a few people. Somebody says, okay, this ditch, huh? ah, I crossed it. Then somebody says, can I? Can I cross it? He'll fall into the ditch. Self-doubt. I can or I cannot. So many of you have doubts like that, na? I gave you a simple example. You must have seen this, na? Somebody wants to cross the ditch and they fall into the ditch. Doubts. If you say, I can, and if you know you can, you will go over. If you have doubts, you will fall into the ditch. Self-doubts. When you have self-doubts, be careful. 
self doubts will lead to inadequate actions like jumping across a ditch because i was in doubt i had inadequate action half hearted attempt and i fell into the ditch right so self doubts lead to inadequate actions and depressed feelings everybody laugh at you when you fall in the ditch hey fell into the ditch few people will come and say come on i'll help you come on so you feel depressed na in front of everybody oh i fell into the ditch i'm just giving you a simple example but there are so many things in life where you have self doubts as you grow up when you have self doubts your actions will be inadequate you won't be confident to do the actions then you will get depressed feelings now if you go through this it's a downward spiral and finally it has led many people to suicide this is what we want to avoid it's a beautiful life that you have don't get depressed when you have not got something when you have not got the expected marks when you don't get what you want wait try again and then get to know what you are capable of you will only get that much you cannot get more so avoid this mantra of failure of self doubts if you have self doubts don't do that job don't ever attempt because you will have inadequate actions leading to depressed feelings if you try it again and again you go to serious depression and there are many people whom we have studied about committing suicides they have gone through this again and again and final thing i am going to go out of the world sorry what a beautiful life you have you are unique who said i am unique i am unique to others you said no you are unique to yourself you are unique in the world so don't go out of this world until you have to naturally go out now what is the opposite of it write this down self assurance self confidence and self esteem if i know what i am good at i will do it by saying i know i can i will i will show it to you how many of you have said that i know i have it in me i know i can do it i have done it i will show you how to do it how many of you speak like that how many of you have spoken like that it can be anything it can be any small activity also how many of you feel confident self assurance is i can i can if everybody says hey you can't ah oh, how dare you say i can't i know i can do it i'll show you how to do it that is self assurance deeper greater than self confidence from self assurance comes self confidence from self confidence comes self esteem you are proud of yourself right i am an achiever i have achieved i can achieve this is the opposite of failure now if you leave the self 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 take the first letter of the next words just take the first letter of the next words and assemble it what do you get new or self take the first letter of the next word in the next line the first letter of the next word the first letter of the next word a c e a s means what a s means what haven't you heard this expression a s how many of you follow tennis how many of you follow tennis in tennis when the player serves and the opponent cannot play that ball it's called an ace numero uno number one a c e means what so what do you say i am say that i am
Yes. You're number one in what you're good at. Once you know you're good at it, your confidence is brimming. Right? Say it with pride. You are born as an ace. By birth, you are an ace. But sometimes, certain situations, people will tell you, look, man, you are not an ace. You are a... Some people say donkey, isn't it? In Nepali, what do you say for donkey? Gada. Gada. I mean, gada hai. Yeah? How many of you have heard that? You like it when they say gada? Huh? Hey, gada. Ass. What will you say? If they say you're a gada, you're an ass, what will you say? What should be your answer? No, I. No, same to you, my dear. Are Baba, I am not an ass. I am number one ghoda. Hmm? I am a horse. I am a winning horse. Don't say same to you. Okay. Thanks, thanks. He very, very, what you call, frankly said same to you. Because that is the habit. So now, I will give him a chocolate so that he will stop saying same to you for the rest of his life. <laughs> you will not say same to you to anybody else. Okay? If they call you monkey, don't say same to you. If they call you donkey, don't say same to you. Hmm? Okay? You will not do that. That's why the chocolate. All right. See, he said it very frankly. That was a spontaneous reaction. I like it. I love it. This is something which you can write down. If you don't understand, later in life you will understand. But for the older people, what a lovely quote from the second century before Christ. The Greek philosopher Cicero said, Natural ability without education has more often risen a man to glory and virtue than education without natural ability. Most successful people in this world have used their natural ability. I'm not discouraging people from getting educated, but when you get educated and you have the extra qualification from school, college, and university, and you combine your natural ability, you are numero uno, unbeatable. You're unbeatable. You are the future of Nepal. You have to be the number one in whatever you do. And you must take Nepal to the number one status in every field that you will be involving in and indulging in. What will you do? You will take Nepal to? Where will you take Nepal? Number one on the top. And it's in your hands. You are going to do it in the next few years. Well, guys, is it too heavy for you? Is it okay? Is it light? Well, this program is all meant for 18 and above or 25 and above. But then today we had to give a jalak of this as well as handwriting. So you're going to be getting this, I mean, uh, next session on handwriting and lettering and calligraphy. I'll clarify all that to you. And I'll also show you some demonstrations. But this is sometimes some people have felt a little heavy, but then I hope it's not heavy. Is it okay? Tell me, frankly. Like you said, same to you. Ah, lovely. Now you tell me. Jay, this is a little heavy for us, yeah. Come on. You have local radio station where you have a program listener's choice. I'm giving you the choice. If you think it is too heavy, you tell me it's heavy. Or I don't understand this. It's not. Shall we continue? With your permission. Thank you. So I'm going to see number ones in this classroom after a few years. Nepal will be proud of you. Find your natural abilities. I'll just stop with a few slides and then get into handwriting. What is an ability? First of all, if I say find your natural ability, what is an ability? 
An ability is a capacity or power to do something physical or mental, cleverness, intelligence, or talent. I think you all have that. You have the capacity or the power to do something physical, maybe playing a game or doing something with your hands artistically. Mental, you may think a lot of things. Uh, there is a girl full of imagination. With her imagination, she could do a lot of things. Dream, fantasize, and do a lot of innovative things for Nepal. Cleverness, intelligence, and talent is also an ability. Very clever, somebody says, isn't it? How intelligent and very talented. I know you are all full of talent, intelligence, and cleverness, but it is all hidden inside you. This session, I'm trying to see how to get it out of you. Maybe after the session, you'll go home and you will realize and you'll bring out each one of it. You're all the stars of tomorrow, stars of Nepal. So what is intelligence? Normally, people use all these words, but then when you go home and ask, you said ability, what's ability? Intelligence, what is intelligence? Let's go deeper, so that it's more clear for you, isn't it? So what is intelligence? The power of learning, understanding, and reasoning. What we do is, this is for exam tomorrow. Open the book, read it. Mm. History, this is the so-and-so king ruled in so-and-so year in this country. So and so year, so and so king, you rule this country. Magap, 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 magap. Understanding? No. Who was that king? I don't know. Yeah, it was in syllabus. What did he do? It's not my concern. I wrote my exam. I'm not bothered. Many things when you read, understand, and try to ask the question to reason it out. Why? What? Where? When? How? Many times you must ask the question, why, 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 why? That's when you will get the reason. Why is this done like this? Why should we do this? Why you should not do this? So go to the deeper understanding and find the reasoning. What is talent? Talents are naturally recurring patterns of thought, of feelings, of behavior that can be productively applied your talents are innate it's within you your talents are within you recurring patterns i feel i like to do this i feel i want to do this i love to do this i want to try a hand at this there is an inner voice telling you recurring patterns of thought you feel that you will do this you'll be able to do that you feel nice like the hero who's sitting in this class the teacher who saw his teacher and said, I feel I should also become a teacher. I feel I can do it. I should become a teacher was his recurring thought. And he adapted a few things to do in his behavior that has made him a teacher today. Right? We have examples within us. And the talents are innate inside you. You need not search anywhere outside. Tell me when you're finished copying, I'll go to the next slide. Is it something which you will apply, which you will practice, you will follow? Or is it Baba, Black Sheep, Yassa, Rasta, Three Bags Full? What is it? Shall I move to the next slide? Shall I move to the next slide? Oh! Ah, what is intelligence? We are going back to that. Oh no. What is talent? We are finished. Some examples I'm going to give you. If you are inquisitive, what is inquisitiveness? Questioning. Why? 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 What is this? What is that? Why is that happening? You're charming. 
You know how to really speak well. You know how to present things. You charm people. How many of you are inquisitive? How many of you are charming? Competitive. I want to do better. I want to do better than this person. I want to do better than myself. Ha. Competition within yourself. Responsible. You take up responsibility. I am responsible to do this job. I will do this job. I am not going to be lazy and give reasons. No, it's not possible. I can't do that. How many of you have got any one of this or all of this? Inquisitive, charming, competitive, responsible. Each one is a talent. I'm just giving you a simple example. These are all simple examples. Each one of them is a talent. If you have it, you have the talent. Have you know how to find the talents in you? Even seemingly negative traits can be called talents if they can be applied productively. Seemingly negative. Some people may say negative. What's that? Obstinacy. Stubborn. There are some people who are stubborn, who stick to it and say, I will do only this. I will not do the other things. Sometimes being stubborn also helps you. If it is applied productively. If it is applied usefully. Nervousness. Being nervous is also a talent. So ask the question, what if something happens? And anticipate. Now in Nepal, some people will say, oh, the weather pattern is changing. What if there's an earthquake? You've had earthquakes. So you're saying, how to take action? How to take corrective action? How to really manage the situation when there's an earthquake? So somebody is nervous. Oh, there may be an earthquake. There may be an earthquake next. What to do? What to do? Hey, keep quiet, man. Simply always saying earthquake, earthquake. Don't talk negative. No, but then, if an earthquake happens, what is the immediate action to be taken? That what if is to anticipate any disaster and take corrective action. So even negatively seeming, Actions or thoughts can be productively applied. So you make your contingency plans. You plan for your pitfalls. You plan to go somewhere and suddenly it rains and there's a flood. What's the other option? You have seen all this. You have experienced it. Ah, this is what I am. Somebody will say, you're talking too much. Shut up. How many of you have been told, you talk too much? <laughs> One, two, and then? Any more? I like it. 